Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canvas, sort of a recreation of one of my original paintings from very early on in my painting career called The Fallen. Uh, and we wanted to see how we would do it about three years later. So remember to hit that like button before we get started. Check the description for all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. We're going to do it just like this. Hey, welcome back. All right, well, uh, you know, I'm always looking for something to do on a Wednesday. And... I put it out recently in the Bob Ross group, you know, would you guys want me to do one of these older paintings that I've done before? Actually, I'll show it to you real quick. Hey, there it is right there, right? You can actually see my whole setup right here. Look at this, all this back screen, <laughs> behind the scenes footage, right? We're gonna paint that painting right there. Let's see. Now, obviously it's not going to be as, you know, exactly the same. I'm not gonna do it. I don't wanna do it exactly the same. So in that one, we sort of went for like a, a sunset. This will only be actually the ones where I'm not even looking at the TV. I'm looking at the actual painting that we're going to paint. So let's make a sunset and uh, it'll look completely different than that one, but the same sort of like composition, I guess you'd call it, right? So let's go into our yellow and just make this really bright area like over the top of the mountains. And the mountains started up pretty high in this one. Back when I first painted this, I was only three months into my painting journey when I very first painted this scene. And it was kind of like magic just struck and I I just produced this amazing thing and I just, I couldn't believe it myself. I really couldn't. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of the crimson because we don't have many colors. And you can get this beautiful sunsetty pink color if you mix the crimson and the cad yellow and you just watch them grow together, right? Just mixing all the colors together. Just like that and if you cut it, if you get enough on your brush, there we go. You won't get all those streaks like that, right? And we can go blend all those out. It's no big deal. Pull in some pink, just right into the, all that yellow right there, right? And the more that we blend it together, the more it's gonna just become soft and have these beautiful little colors. Look at all that. It's gonna turn into orange. We can even go down. We could save maybe this little yellow piece over here. And just the more we blend that, the more it's going to change, right? So we'll throw a little bit of the crimson up in there, a little bit down here, because we never know how much is going to show really from the back. So let's do a little bit of our blue. Why don't we come in from this corner and we'll just drag this blue all the way across. See how it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter? That's what we want. And that's also why we put the layer of crimson in between the yellow and the blue, and that way we don't go green in the sky, right? And I don't want to overmix this lighter area, some of these lighter areas over here. You don't want to overmix those into this whole thing where now all of a sudden your sky has no differences in color, right? That's why we wear this big old shirt, because it says differences in color on it. You gotta have your differences. Right? The more and more we mix those together, the more it's going to go like this grayish color. So don't overdo it. Still haven't washed the brush. You can still see some of the crimson in there. Some of the blue on this corner over here where we kind of grabbed it. And let's say, well, let's get a little bit of the midnight black. Okay, just a little bit on the one corner though. See how we almost load the same corner of the brush every time. And let's go back up into here. Just dump a little bit that midnight black in there just to change it up just smallest bit we don't need a whole lot all right we'll mix that up lightly and then poof we got a really cool sky really cool we can even bring some of that dark color just to fill in that little bit right there all right the more and more we blend them together the more we'll get all these cool little differences but there is a point where you can overdo it i'm going to switch to a clean dry brush now and we're going to go into our lightest area first and really just mix that up. And if you wanted to, to make it brighter, you could add, you know, some titanium white, big thick titanium white, and kind of mix that into that area and just blend it until you like it, right? So then we'll move out into our crimson, go over our whole sky, staying away from this light area. You don't want to drag it back down in, right? Blah, 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 blah. Just blendy, blendy, blendy. Yeah, we change our angles so it looks like some of our sky is coming in this way, some of it's coming from that side, some of it's straight off in the background. These almost look like faraway clouds, right? You never know what's, what's going to happen, you know, just on its own. You'll never, you will be amazed at what will drop out of the brush. A little bit more of that pinkish color in there, just the smallest bit so it can be very soft and light, right? You can even take 
some of the color, you know, that we have on this brush that's a little bit darker that we hadn't washed yet and kind of do these faraway clouds. Just a little bit of change in there. A little bit of difference, way off. Look, we get these really far away little suckers. It might not even make it into our painting. We never know. Never know where it's going to be. I do want the mountains to kind of just grab a little bit of that yellow right there. So we'll see what they look like, right? Okay, we're going to grab a palette knife. I use the small one. I like the small one. It, it kind of hits right everywhere. The, the bigger one is kind of tippy, wishy-washy, all sorts of weird names, right? Okay, let's make up a little bit of cloud for this sky. And we're not going to go too crazy. We've got to keep the colors light because we went so light with our colors here. But I figure maybe there's some soft, far away ones. Just to start out, why don't we pull out our white, just straight, flat out, just like that. I'm going to scrape up a little bit so we have this little roll. And then up here, let's just, we'll just knock off one of these uh, chemtrails like that. Just very softly. Pulling it and you get this cool thing. It doesn't even matter that it's different, right? The more you mess with it, the more it's going to go crazy. Now in our, in our lighter color area, I want to go with these lighter colors so we can take some of the crimson, some of the yellow, kind of mix it up into this kind of orangey color, right? You can always grab more. So start with less, grab more. I want it to be darker than this orange here, but not too dark, right? So we just very lightly mix it in. Scrape it up. We only need the smallest little amount. Really got to work hard to scrape it off the palette like that. Look at that. All right, mix it up like that. We have this little bit of difference here. And we'll scoop all that up and we'll use it all in one cloud. So we get all of it on the knife. And look, it's not a whole lot, right? The teeniest, tiniest little bit. Not a whole lot. And maybe off in the distance. We don't want to put them too far. See how it's just, just that little bit of difference right there. And as it blends, it's going to blend in. So... It's going to want to disappear on us. Okay, we'll take that same two inch brush, the cleaner one, right? Just very small little circles, just so we get this soft little bit of, of uh, bottom of our cloud back there, right? Then we'll come back in, we'll grab our white, and we'll mix it with, uh, we can mix it with a little bit of the yellow, I guess. It's still going to remain very white. Mix it into that same old pile right there. And we can come over and kind of decide where our cloud's going to live. Scrape up that yellow. Dump it on. Scrape it up. Dump it on. We'll go back. We get a one-inch brush now because we're doing these small little details, right? So we'll grab it like that. We'll very lightly pull it down. Very, very lightly because it wants to disappear on us. It wants to blend in with all those other colors. Okay, now we're going to come in with just some straight white. Then we can pull it flat, scrape it up so we have a little bit on the knife, and then we can add it in different places where that yellow didn't get to, right? Didn't stretch out far enough. So let's add some of the yellow, uh, some of the white. Maybe some of the white over there. In different thicknesses. That's why I like using the palette knife, because it's a random thing. It's not a, you know, you can't get, you're not going to get the exact same amount, you know, on your knife as I am on my knife, or a palette, you know, a, 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 it's same with a fan brush or any brush. Look at that, though. We leave some of the yellow cloud in there. Throw some of the white in. Very lightly mix it, though, because it wants to disappear. Okay, take our, our cleaner brush. Swipe up, swipe over. And we have these very soft little puffy clouds way off there. Now, for our darker area, let's go for our darker shadow. We'll take our blue and our crimson, and we'll mix them up into this purple. Snag a little bit of that black. Throw it in there. Grab a little bit of the white. Brighten it up. See what it's going to look like. Now we can go back in and adjust, get a little bit more, make it a little darker, maybe a little more crimson than anything else. There we go. Look at that. That's a nice purpley color right there, right? Again, I'm going to scrape up the smallest amount and let's say there's like a bigger cloud that lives off in here in this section, but I don't want to, I don't want to get rid of that chemtrail, right? And this guy's more on like a swooping, like the air's really rushing him. Maybe we'll cover over some of this little guy and just bring it down like there's this whole big chunk of cloud coming down. All right, maybe we need a little bit more or we're going to run out of room. Okay, grab our, our little one inch brush that we had very lightly. You can see as it mixes with the colors and the liquid white that's on the canvas, it will brighten up. 
but we don't want it to be too bright and we don't want to lose all of those other colors either. I mean, look at all these cool little differences in there, right? Cool little things, little differences in color. Differences in our sky, right? And all that is, is just a big nasty shadow. And then we can come in with our white, grab up a little bit of crimson maybe this time, make up a little pile over here, just so it's a little different, right? And then we can have, you know, kind of, kind of low lights and highlights and shadows, right? We'll have all three. And we'll come up in here and kind of decide, maybe this guy wanted to just kind of live out here. Who knows? We'll just dump it on. Maybe there's another huge bit that goes in there. Scrape up all this over here. Just kind of mush it into place, right? Never know what's going to happen. Go back in, same little brush, very lightly though, because the more you push, the more it's going to want to disappear and blend in with that purple in the back, right? Very lightly, very, very lightly, and very messy. Like, it doesn't have to be a perfect shape. Does not have to be at all. But you can go back, you can add white, you can add all sorts of things. That's why we leave those areas, right? Let's say there's a bit of brighter cloud under here. I don't know where that blue came from. Where did you come from, Mr. Blue? All right, let's grab up some actual white. Go over that, see if we can't mush out that blue. And see if we can't kind of create a double cloud in itself just with these two different colors, right? I'm gonna come back in very lightly again, otherwise it will blend with the color behind it and we don't want that to happen. Don't want that to happen. But we wanna let our clouds like flow and live, right? Be crazy. Crazy clouds. You can even swipe them certain ways if you wanted to. Let that, like the wind is really just rushing through. Really great. Love that. Let me take up our last little bit and we'll throw like this far off guy up here and see what he turns in, turns into, right? Just a little soft little fluffer. Maybe it's the very top of the clouds back there or some kind of something. Just adds another little bit of depth, right? A little bit of depth, swipe up, swipe over. And because there's not a whole lot of paint on the canvas, we're not gonna move a whole lot. Look at that thing just shooting right out of there. All right, now we're gonna come back in. We're gonna darken up this purple color into a much darker purple, right? A little bit of blue, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of black, right? Big old nasty amount. Scrape it all up and then just mix it into one gross dark color. And you'll have this kind of shadowy black. It's Josh's shadowy black, as we like to say. It's the, shadow, it's the color I use for most every shadow of anything. Let's move the brush over here so I don't dip the handle down into some nasty paint off my knife, right? I need a slightly bigger space. All right, let's do, we only really have one mountain chain in this one, but let's do two. So let's grab up a little bit of white, right? Not that much, a little bit. Mix it in because the white will turn it gray really fast. And again, we have white on the canvas, right? All this stuff is mixed with white. So anything that we put on there is going to mix further with white. Okay, now we have a slightly grayer pile and then our darker pile and then we've got black which is even darker than that if we really needed it right that's why we like to make up our own colors okay let's do this far off mountain back here he lives way off right very kind of straightish all we're really worried about is what the knife is leaving the top edge like right up here that's all we care about don't care about what happens down here right take it mix it Make it round, make it pointy, make it look like your own bit of mountain. Just like that, just by smushing it on. Look at how flat I'm pushing the knife. Flat, right? I really wanna mush that paint on, move it all around as much as I can because I don't want it to grow. If we don't do anything and we, and we don't smash it out and there's too much paint, the mountain will grow way down here and you're gonna be like, what happened? I got way too much paint on there, right? So let's pull it out. Pull it out to the side. Right, get this real far off. You can pull these as almost as flat as you want if you needed to, right? Save some of that light back there. Let it, don't try to cover up all that light. And don't try to cover up all the stuff that's underneath, right? You don't have to, you really don't. Okay, let's make some far off shadowy color. So we'll grab up some of that uh, white, some of our 
blue down here. All right, we get this nice little, we actually grabbed up some of the green as well. That's not what we wanted, Josh. There we go, it'll look cool though. Take a little bit of that dark color, mix it in just to dull it down. Come over here, leave half of your mountain is in the shadow, remember, especially if just a little bit of the light is gonna be showing from back there. A lot of this guy is gonna be in this deep shadow back here. So, once again, grab up a little bit of blue and white. We're gonna make a separate pile right next to it so we can show you the difference, right? Nice dark pile, much brighter pile over here. We're gonna use them both. See how they pull out just like that. Scrape it up, decide where your shadows live and pull it out. This one's so far away, we don't need a whole lot of detail on there. All right, leave some room in between where your snow is gonna sit and where your next snow is gonna sit and kind of fill that area in with some shadows. Then we'll come back here. We're gonna mix up this white with some of this gray because I don't want it to be the brightest white it can be. The brightest white is gonna be for the closer mountain. All right, we're gonna scrape that up. Come in here. Look, it's, it's just a, the slightest little bit different. It's not a whole lot. Just that little difference in color is all we really need. And the more and more we use, right, leave those little dark areas in between. Come up here. Pull it out, smush it. Take a step back and look, see what you just did. What does it look like, right? And then adjust from there. Again, these do not need to be very white. It is a, it's a very shadowy, misty mountain way back here, right? I mean, there's a little bit of light on the edge, something. But not a whole lot, right? We're gonna take that and we're just gonna tap the bottom, give it this misty feel. And all we're doing is tapping and dragging away. Right, bringing the color down because we don't want to see all of it. Swipe it up like that. Swipey, 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 right? Get another clean brush because I don't want to do the washing and really just make that bit kind of just blend in with all the other colors back there. Look at that. And don't let it go straight across, right? This one looks like it comes down and comes back up. It's kind of neat. All that little foggy, misty area we can definitely use. Okay, now we're gonna switch back to the darker color that we didn't mix with the white, right? We made much more of this so we can really use a lot of it. And maybe let's do, who knows? We'll do a little thing down from here. Only because I wanna save that bit of yellow in there, right? And then maybe it comes up and we need more paint because we're running out, All right? We're just dragging it across and whatever falls off the knife falls off. And then you can go in and really push it flat, shape it, Block it out, see what it's gonna look like. And if we leave just enough area of that misty area back there, right, you can even come up into it with the next bit. Go all sorts of crazy, right? Because we didn't put a whole lot of highlight way back there. Let's see, I'm gonna drag it in. Maybe we'll get one that lives down this way. We can blend those guys back, maybe this guy, right? I don't like them having all flowing the same way. So maybe over there, we'll come this way and cut across back against all that other stuff. All about how we're gonna pull it out, right? And you can see the color is immediately darker than the color back here, that lighter gray. And that will push it off into the distance. And the more that we pull with our, our brush and we can shape our mountain, it'll turn into a ridge, right? Maybe you take this guy back through where it got light down there, right? Now all of a sudden, that mountain lives in front and we can do something different. And that's why yours is gonna look different than mine. Don't worry about it. If it looks different, it looks different. And yours is gonna look cool. And in some way, yours is gonna inspire me to paint a different painting based off of something you did. There we go, pull it down. Look at how lightly we're being, right? Just like flicking it, flicking it down. Not covering all that pink though. And look at how far we just push that other mountain way back there. He's gone. He is out for the count. Okay, pull that down. And then again, take our brush, drag some of that white up, some of the color down, right? Look at the circles we're making. You guys see? This is exaggerated, right? And the more and more we go over it, 
the more and more it will soften until you can't see any more circles. And all of a sudden it's this cool little bit of fog down here. Really neat. Really, really neat how it does that. All right, before we get too far ahead, we need to put some water in. So we're gonna take our blue and get it up over here onto our one inch brush. Starting on that bottom down here, we're gonna pull in from the side. You see how our strokes get longer and longer and longer? Right, can't all just be straight up and down. And it's a very small, light amount of paint, right? Come in from this side, turn the brush over. Leaving that white area in between. It'll end up being like some kind of shine on our water, right? Just like Bob used to do. Have some shiny bit of water back there. Go over the whole thing very lightly, and that way you don't cover everything, right? It's still very, very, very small amount of paint. Now we're gonna go into the phthalo green. I'm gonna pull that out. We're gonna do the same thing. Starting down here, look at how it mixes in. It makes this gorgeous color, look at that. Especially starting from the bottom versus the top. We don't wanna have all that dark color way up here where it's really faded out, right? I'm gonna finish the sides real quick. Come back in a little bit more thalo green. Starting at the bottom, so it's the darkest down there. And then it will mix in with the blue and the white and become this lighter color. Just like that, with this cool little wicked looking water, right? You can add more and make it look much deeper. But again, start at the bottom and work your way up to the top. And that way it'll be darker in the corners than it is anywhere else. And it's not a whole lot of paint because we're gonna to continue to add paint onto it, right? We don't want it to be as thick as it can possibly be if we're gonna to continue to add paint and add paint and add paint. So it was kind of nice teal light blue water, a little bit of sheen in there. Haven't even really covered a whole lot of the canvas. And uh, now we'll come and highlight this mountain. How are you enjoying this, by the way? I always forget to say, uh, you know, hit that like button. If you're watching on YouTube and it doesn't have the you know, little thumbs up high lit, Hit that like button, man. If you don't like it, YouTube will not show it to more people. They're like, ah, no one's liking this video. It must not be that good. So if you think the video is good, like the video and uh, hit that share button when we get done towards the end of the video. Share it to your Facebook or send it to your grandma. Send it to somebody, right? Mix in a little bit of white and blue. So we have a lighter color and then we'll come back. Actually, that's a little bit too light. Let's make it a little bit darker. A little bit of black to dull it down, make this kind of darker bluish grayish. There we go. And we're gonna come back, we're gonna grab up some white and mix it over here. Ooh, it's even got some of that pink in there just cause that's what was underneath. That's gonna be nice. It's all this blue, all these little different things. Look at those streaks of color in there, right? That's what's gonna give us these cool little breaks. Okay, let's go over to our light blue pile, our shadowy pile. We're gonna scoop it up and then just let it Dump off the knife, okay? When you don't have any more left, you need to go back and get more. Right? The harder you push, the more it's gonna smush all your cool little details. So, get it to break where you want. You gotta have enough paint. You gotta have a big enough roll on your knife, right? And let it fall off in certain directions. Look at that. You gotta make up some more, it looks like. Just covering the, the left half of all of our peaks, right? So we give our, our highlights room to kind of shine, as I like to say. There we go. Now remember, you can always mix up the bottom. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom with your highlights. You can mix it, you can do all sorts of things and make your fog, so don't worry about it if you haven't gone all the way down or if you can't go all the way down. Right, take this, look at how you just drag it over. Whatever the canvas wants, it's gonna steal from your knife. Whatever it doesn't want, it's not gonna steal, right? Make your little bounces, make all these little things. Little pieces where the snow can't, you know, even grip on because it's so steep or the rocks are get too warm or whatever the reason, right? Very lightly back here. Let it kind of fade off and then guess what? Guess what's coming? Oh, this guy, right, right in front. So we'll make up a whole big bit of paint. We'll probably need some more white paint here, right? Pulling it down. You can even add like a, a little peak to it, right? But if you're gonna add that little peak, if you're gonna add that thing, it's 
got to have some shadow behind it, right? Otherwise, it just looks weird. It doesn't look correct. Grab up some more of our white. Bam. That grabbed in even some of the pink, which is going to look neat, right? It's going to look cool. Need to make up some more of our blue. And our white. Just mix it up. Flatten it out. Scrape it up. Flatten it out. Grab it. Let's see. That's even a different color blue, which is going to look really cool when we stick it, you know, next to this other white. You grab up some of that pink in this guy. We'll just fill it in. In between those little shadowy areas, the light came down and lit it up. And because we mixed it and we're using these little differences, it's going to end up looking really, really cool. I'm using all these cool little things, right? All these different angles. It's not about the same angle every time. Who wants to paint that where it's the same thing, you know, straight, 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 straight over to the side, straight over to the side. No one wants to paint that. A little bit of blue in there. Ah, there we go. We gotta sneak in the blue. It's that cool little shadow thing. That's what they do in the movies. If you ever watch a movie and it's like a nighttime scene, they're really just using blue light, right? That's all they're really doing. A little bit more of that white up here. Right? The more you go over it, the more it's going to mix. So if it's too thick in one spot, keep going over it. It'll mix out and it'll change and it'll blend with the color that's underneath and it'll do all sorts of things. Gotta make those cool little noises though, otherwise it doesn't work. It really doesn't. And that looks neat. So what we're doing though, light, dark, well, shadow, right? Light, dark, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. It's like a Back and forth, you gotta do it. Can't just be all the same. Can't be all the same. I, I love this new blue shadowy color that we added. It's very deep, I like it. All right, maybe this guy came down. If we can get enough paint, there we go. Just kind of dies into nothing, because who knows? Can't tell me it's not back there somewhere in the wilderness. This exact scene. Just let it blend down all the different areas that the light is hitting. It's lovely. This one is looking fantastic. But we don't want to overdo it, right? That's it. So all you gotta do, all you gotta do is touch it one too many times, and now you've overdone it. And then you can't go back, right? Can't go back from overdoing it. So we're gonna take our brush, and again, we're gonna swipe up from the bottom. This just gives it this blurry effect, right? Go up as high as you want in the direction that you came down. So if you came down with your knife that way, right? In this instance, we went this way, so we need to come up this way with the brush. And you can go as high as you would like. I do not recommend going all the way to the top. I don't recommend doing that. That is a dangerous, slippery slope. There we go, just a little bit of swipe. Just makes it blurry at the bottom, right? Now we're gonna take our brush, bring it in, right? Bring some of that color down into the mist. it and bringing it down so we have this little bit of foggy area right still haven't covered this that's the original white that's on the canvas sure it's mixed in a little bit with the stuff that's there but it's not a whole lot it's a beautiful little thing okay now we're gonna see if we can't cheat okay we're gonna we're gonna cheat a little bit we're gonna take our green just our straight sap green right right into our fan brush because it's gonna mix and become lighter off in the distance with all this liquid white that's right here, right? All that white area, it's gonna change this and become a lighter color. So, we're gonna go lightly, right? Let's say there was a bit of forest and it started over here, and Im immediately it starts going very bright yellow, uh, very bright green, sorry. Right? I'm gonna drag some of those colors down into our, our water down here as well. Back to the same pile of paint, nothing really special. All right, over here we're gonna get a little bit taller. All right, and as we get taller, where do we have to go? We have to go smaller, uh, farther down into the dirt as well, into the water down there. A little bit of blue, a little bit of black, a little bit of that green, just to make a darker bluish, greenish, blackish bit of forest, right? Same color, you can even throw phthalo green in there. Just change it up, changes the color of it the littlest bit. 
And now we have this very dark, like foresty green type of color. I'm running out of room to set my utensils down, that's for sure. Okay, we're gonna go into that color, and that's gonna become like the very bottom of our, our forest back here, right? So we're not gonna go up as high, but we are gonna go down into the, into the water with it, right? Our reflections, and as we went higher over here, we have to go lower over here. So it's about the same, okay? Now we're gonna take our two inch brush, and just decide where our water line is, way back there, right? way off in the distance. Take these, swipe them over, you get these instant reflections back there. Okay, now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make this pile even darker. We're gonna use some of that purpley color, some more of the sap green, some more of the black. Why not use some of the yellow too? You can throw it all in there. It doesn't matter. As long as it's a different color, a different shade than the stuff that we just put up there, right? Look at this nastiness. All right, now I do want to take these, look at just by doing the same thing with our reflections, just in reverse, how it just flattens all those trees out there, right? Let's see. We do need a bit of darker ones, like they're mixed in with these guys. So we're gonna come back in. Now we have like three different kinds of forest living back in here, right? A little bit of our green down into our water, just the littlest bit though, because we've already done it once. We don't wanna keep adding paint and then doing it over and over and over again. Okay, we're gonna start up over here. We come down, 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 down. Flat, flat, flat. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Right, boom. Got our perfect little reflections back there. Cool little trees, way far off in the distance, little trees. Perfection. Okay, now again, we can take our knuckles, right? That side, not the side you can see, but the side closest to the canvas. And just kind of pull, push our little, just push up. So it makes that gross kind of shape. Push up, push up. Makes this kind of little foreground land way off back there. You can take the smallest amount of it, kind of pull it out. Now we have our little kind of river bank back there. Cool little bit. Cool little thing back there. And we can come in and do all sorts of cool things. Decide where our water wants to live, where the sand is gonna be or the, the muddy reflection, right? whatever it is, but we have to put our reflections in before that so we don't have to mess around. You know what I mean? You don't have to come back and do it again. Let's take some of this, that same kind of dark green color, right? Just very lightly, scraping up a little bit, going over just like on the mountains, right? Just so it looks messy back there. It's like a swampy mess of something, some sort of rock, some something. All right, some kind of bits, some sort of something back there. We don't even know. It's not the focal point of the painting. A little bit of our liquid white. We're gonna go underneath that a little bit of dark and over it in certain places, but we don't want a whole lot. Gotta have a little bit on your knife. The less you have, the better, right? Don't need a whole bunch. I often have too much. There we go. If you can just grab it and like stretch it across, you know, just deposits over there, you have too much and it's going to look like your water line is too close. So just dip it in, just like that. Just make sure your lines come down a little bit, right? And if you do do too much, do do, I said if you do do too much, just go over it to where it's very thin. And that's all we really need. That is really it. And we don't even really need these ones over here or that guy over there. Don't even really need it, because it's gonna be something else. Now let's come in, grab up that same color, nice and thick on the brush. And instead of doing it like we did it in the original painting, let's do it a little bit different, do it a little bit more in detail, right? Well, so we'll go like this. We're gonna have our, our trees kinda start, okay? Again, angle of my brush is like this. It is not flat, and I'm not touching it just with the corner of the brush. 
I'm also using the back, the knuckle side, not my fingertip side, not this front side, the back side right here. I'm gonna touch it, just very lightly touch. Look at that. I'll try to do it like this, stand your guys' way, right? Touch up, right? As we go down, we push a little bit harder. We get a bigger shape. Bounce a couple times, and now, oh my goodness, it's starting to look like a tree. All right, now by down here, we're using a whole bristles of our brush. Just like this. It's making that, the shape is already like that. You can see the fan brush is curved upward. So all you really gotta do is decide where your trees wanna live. Make sure you have enough paint that it stays thick and, and sticky. Come back, all right, pop in our little branches. Boom, now we have a tree that lives out here in the water. Okay, at the very bottom of him, pull out a little bit of grass, just like that. Right? And then all of a sudden, this whole thing is gonna be filled with grass. It's gonna have a whole nother tree that's gonna be right here. We could fill it up with grass. We could do all sorts of things. Throw some water in there, do all sorts of stuff. All right, so again, very thick on the brush. Very thick, a little bit taller on this guy. All right, touch, touch, touch. And the more we touch, the more little things start happening. And then down around here, they kind of grow into themselves, right? So we really can't see because we're looking through two, three, four trees down around the bottom. So we can't see what's going on down there, okay? Again, we got our little bit of grassy area at the bottom. Take our one-inch brush starting from the back, pull it out very lightly, right? Just so we can see where we're going. Down at this angle, if we don't have enough little grassy bushes on this kind of 45 degree angle right here, then it's not gonna look like it's coming towards us, right? Now we look like, because we're right here, this is further away, this is closer, okay? You can even add a little bit of extra. Just pull it out. Now all of a sudden there's little differences. There's even depth in our, in our little, uh, grassy area, our little walkway, whatever's right here, with this little thing that's coming off the edge, right? Now we can, you can imagine if this was open water, now we're gonna wanna turn our brush over, okay? Now my fingertips are pointing at the canvas, okay? Now we're gonna touch the whole brush first. See how the shape is a curve like that? All right, we can even do our little things like that, just so we stay on track, All right? Touch, 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 touch. But as we get up here, I'm turning the brush so only the, the corner is touching. That's how we make that little soft shape down there, right? Touch, 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 bounce, 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 leave space, leave space, get smaller, get smaller. Brush, brush, side, side, reflections. Bam! Put that on TikTok, okay? Reflections. All right, let's do something nuts. Let's make it prettier than the last one. We're going to get a little bit of liquid white. And let's grab up just a little bit of that green, put it over here, a little bit of yellow. We're gonna mix it into like this kind of grassy color. Ooh, that's nice, right? Again, I don't like just using straight up the color that comes right out of the tube. No one wants to do that. Make up your own colors, it's fun. I'm gonna take some of that green color again on both sides of that same dirty, nasty fan brush. And we're just gonna pop in some little bits in here. Right, little different things happening. Filling it all in, letting it become darker, thicker, lighter. Some things, some of the showing, some aren't showing. Filling up all that area down here, right? What even happens? Where does our grass even end up? Now we can take a bit of that grass, pull it straight down if we can, right? Just the smallest bit. Come over if you can, right? It's not a necessity. But if you can get it to do it and just get that little bit of reflection in there, come back in with our dark, cut in our lines, All right? Come out, just like that. We have this cool little bit of water in here. Water, mud, something, something's happening over here. All right, and this has got to have a little bit of dark underneath it, otherwise it's just gonna look weird. It's gonna look like it's floating. And that's just strange, right? Maybe take some of that darker shadow as well. 
pull it down, pull it over just very softly. Just the same as we did back here. We did these real hard to get them to grow, right? These ones just very soft, very soft like. A little bit of that liquid white on our knife and again, come back in, cut it over the top of your shadow. All right, letting it deposit and come out the back of the, or the front of the knife, depending on how you have yours turned. Right, let it come out like that. You get these cool little things. Little things that happen in the forest, right? Bam, cool little bits. It's just messy. That's all it needs to be is just messy. Okay, and we're gonna take some of that liquid white and come into that lighter color green, really make it light colored. All right, you can do it on this big old brush. Again, same thing. Gonna come in, don't want it to be too white. And we're gonna touch, let's do, <laughs> we're totally out of white paint. All right, let's do a little bit of brown, come up with our trunks. Just a little bit of brown showing through is all you really need. That is really it. Just on the side, right? And then we're gonna cover most of it anyway. Most of it is gonna be covered up. Okay, now very lightly, we're gonna start at the top, just very lightly gonna to touch and pull away. All right, we're not smushing, we've already made the shape. We don't need to make the shape. Now we're just wondering how many times we can touch it with our fan brush before we turn it all this bright color, right? And all we need to do is touch it enough times just to get it to change, right? We're not covering every bough of the tree. It gets darker as it gets down to the bottom, so we don't have to worry about it, right? Let's flip it over. Come up here, just touch. If you don't, if it's not pulling it off, right, and the, and the tip of your brush is dirty, wipe it off, go back in, get more liquid white, back into our little color there, both sides. You can get, you could use some more green in here. There we go, just changes it up. A little bit of yellow, why not? Just makes it nice and sloppy, so when we come back in, and we start to touch on those big, thick areas of our tree, it starts to grab stuff, right? Look at that empty space. That's why we left that little bit of trunk there. It's gorgeous, right? Just touching it. That's all we're doing, just touching it. Right down here. I kind of like that it's a little bit darker down there anyway. So we're not gonna do too much. Do less, Josh, do less. I'm gonna take a little bit of black, just straight up black and really get it in underneath those trees. Kind of let it work its way out into that greener color, right? Now you're like, oh Josh, we've covered too much. No, back into our liquid white. Let it just climb up into those shadows just a little bit, right? Just a little, couple different places. You're like, what's going on back in those shadows? I wanna know, someone tell me. All right, let's take our, uh, our palette knife, scrape in a couple little sticks that live back in there, right? Little things grow up out from underneath these trees. All sorts of little things. All right, now we had one more little bit that came in from the side. So let's switch to our fan brush. We're gonna go blue, crimson, and black, all right now. That's why I put them all next to each other. You guys are like, oh, I'm worried about my colors mixing together. But no, that's what we want. We want colors to mix together. Right on our fan brush, right? We'll do one more set of trees over here. A little bit taller, nothing too crazy, maybe just one. One big guy, couple bounces, couple bounces. I can realize I'm running out of paint. It's not as thick on my brush as it needs to be. It's not holding its shape, right? So go back in, really load it up. Come back again. The, re the thing that gives it depth is these things being soft because we went over them with the brush and these ones in front being nice and thick and chunky, right? That's what's gonna give you the depth. So go back, get more on your brush, right? And again, you don't have to fill it up all the way. You don't have to do Anything you don't want to do, you could skip, right? Because you, you really love that bit back there, so you want to show it off. You gotta skip a little, right? All sorts of little different things. Maybe one more, right down there. That'll be the base. And then we'll grow out just a little bit. Just be this one lone tree out here in the grass. Just out there in the grass. Again, look at the angle, right? Just like that. Same thing as over here. Other way. 
All right, let's come in. We're going to grab up some of our brown first because we always forget to do it. And a little bit of brown on the trunk of our tree, especially in the areas where it's exposed, right? That's where we're going to really be able to tell that that brown is on there. And if you can touch it and pull away, if you have enough on your knife to where you can just touch it and pull away, and it leaves this thing that's hanging out over the top, it gives it a really cool shadow on its own. All right, we'll go back over these guys. Go back in just to cover those little, couple little areas where we hit the trunk a little bit extra. All right, but these areas where it's exposed like that, I love letting that show. And then when you're looking at it on the side, it's literally sticking off the canvas about a quarter of an inch. All right, a little bit of our grassy color down here, and then we're gonna make up some new green. A little bit of grass down in there. I don't wanna cover up all of those purpley bits, though. You gotta leave some of them exposed. That's our shadow. Can't kill the whole shadow. Take some of these guys, pull them straight down. Just so we get that little bit of difference in the color right there, right? Just like so. Now we're gonna come back in. A little bit of our, our kind of shoreline, our mud. And then we'll fill that with some grass too. You see, we don't like to have it come out straight. Not this perfect shape. It's not a perfect thing. And then down here, it was a little filled, but it's a little sparse, right? It's not gonna ever see the whole thing. You never, ever will. That'll be our tree reflection right there. All right. Now, if we could just get a little bit of this guy. There's a lot of paint on there too. Just pulling them out just so light because there's a lot of paint right there. This big old fat ridge of water just leaving out the edge of the knife. That's why I like making these ones very small back there because when you come up here, you can have these giant thick ones and they look really cool. Really cool. A couple little swampy grassy bits down around the bottom there. It's all nasty. All nasty stuff growing out of it, coming up out of the water over here. Just all kind of gross. Again, it's not even really as dark as I really like it back there, but it's okay. We'll, we'll clean up this nasty green pile that's, that's just done, used its fill, all right? And make some new stuff. A little bit of green, a little bit of our liquid white, a little bit of the yellow, and we'll make up a new color. Look at that. Beautiful little color right there. Okay, come back in, a little bit more liquid white, same kind of light colored brush just to make it light and sticky. Come back in and really add some green highlights, but we're not covering everything, right? We don't need to cover everything. A Little bit more liquid white. Get it all over the tips of the bristles. Okay, we can come back up here. Just barely touching, because I don't want to cover all of the shadow. If you cover all the shadow, you have failed. Right, you gotta leave bits that are deep and dark and hidden back there. Right, so not even every shadow gets hit with, with highlight. It really doesn't, and it doesn't have to. Just That's just the rule, doesn't have to. There we go. And the more times you push at it, the harder it's gonna become to stick, and then the more mud that you're gonna make. So make sure you get it right on your first go. All right. Now comes the cool part, the tree limb that's all just in the water, right? That is the neat part about this whole thing. So let's grab some more of that dark color because this is a very dark colored log. Kind of sounds familiar to some of the guys. Dark colored log, it's very familiar to you. <laughs> no wonder I only have, you know, I have the majority of male fans, right? Because we're so gross around here. Guys are gross. Okay, now, I had this initial thought, and I was like, how, you know, London was like, oh, you should do a, you should do a, um, a tree that's, 
you know, fallen over in the water. I'm like, well, how would I do that? And she's like, paint it like normal, but just on the side. So that's what we're gonna do, right? Remember, it's gonna be big and fat down here in the bottom. So, and not too far, so maybe out there, we're gonna go like this, and the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets, right? And then we can have that just very lightly dip into the water. But the more that comes closer to us, the more little crazy knots and different little things that it's gonna have on it, right? The more depth it'll have to it. Okay, we're gonna take a liner brush filled with your, your brush cleaner or your low odor mineral spirits or odorless paint thinner or regular paint thinner or whatever you have. And we have to remember the angle of these tree branches are gonna be strange because they're laying down, right? We can't just paint them like we normally do. So you almost have to go, all right, if I was a tree branch from here, where would I live? I'd be like up that way. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense <laughs> to your brain. And then if I was this guy, I'd be like, oh, there was this big old branch on me that maybe fell and broke off. Can't forget about the other underside, right? Maybe that one goes down into the water. And there was one that came off this side, but he was like, he wanted to grow up. Right? It was kind of growing out that way. Just remember, keep your head on a on a tilt. We're gonna come up through that. So we push that little piece back behind this log, right? You need to make this one much bigger. Oh yeah. This whole big tree branch. And done fell into the wauta. Add our little little smaller branches, little highlights, little different things. Grow off of this guy. And the more and more you do, the more fun it ends up being. Right? Maybe this one crossed in front of that guy. They're all twisted up. All about where you want to put them. And a lot of the times it's all about the, the thinness of your brush, right? The small little details that we can make with these small little brushes. So you guys can get the same brushes I use uh, through my Amazon affiliate shop, which is amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. How about that? All right, maybe this guy, there was a whole nother big thing that lived over there, but we don't want to go too crazy. All sorts of stuff. And then we can add some bushes around the bottom. We got to decide where it hits the water though. Maybe it goes in. Like there was a little bit, maybe not. We can get rid of it. We can do all sorts of stuff. All right, maybe, boom, it comes down, it hits in right there. There's a little piece, little broken bits, little things that come off the tree, all sorts of different places. This gnarly, nasty little tree, right? That's what this one is. Let's see, maybe this guy was a bigger branch too. And again, we're painting them as they would have fallen. So if it was standing upright, you'd have all these upward facing branches. I love crisscrossing them over each other. It's so much fun. So much fun. There we go. And we can decide where we want it to dip in, right? It's probably gonna be way back here. But it's actually gonna come down and dip into the water. So it's up, it's up to us. We could have, if you painted it with an underside of a, of a curve, it would look like it's laying in the water versus kind of dipping out in, uh, over the end. But no, if we did that, we could do it. Yeah, that could be the tip. Yeah, it's all about how we shadow it. It's up to us, really. Right, so beneath, let's say there would have been some shadow. Then we can always go back and fix this part. All right, there's some off that way, some off that way. It's no big deal. The shadow is no big deal, right? We're gonna take it, gonna pull it down into the water, over to the side, and now we've got our tree branch kind of hanging off the edge. And then we'll just go back and fix anything that got ruined. All right, like these little guys. Now we go, boop, and we know he's in the water right about there. Got these different things over here. Maybe this guy's got a branch, another little branch over there. We do all sorts of crazy stuff. I don't want to cover up too much of my grassy little knoll over here. 
All right, maybe this guy's got one that comes out from down underneath. It's all scraggly and it goes up above the one that's gonna go into the water. Goes off that way. Maybe this guy boop, pops into the water down here. Never know. Never, never know. But we are gonna to wanna to fix this. Just a little bit of an arc there. And we're just pulling it down, pulling down like the shadow of it, right? Swiping it over. And then going back in and going, that looks really neat with that in there and this over there. And that like that, right? Big old branch over here. Now, one cool way to kind of highlight a silhouetted branch is just to make all sorts of little wigglies. All these little wigglies, look at this. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. You get all this cool little branch or bark. Big, thick, nasty bark with, you know, a bunch of ridges. You can take the paint and let it, you know, drag and leave little textured areas and different little places that you want it to show. You gotta just let it fly, right? But don't do too many branches. That's the big, big no-no. Don't do too many. Right? All these little knots, all these little jiggles, all these little weird things that happen in our bark. Now we can get down to the bottom, use up the last of this paint that we have right here, scrape it all up, the black, the blue, the crimson, all of it. Because I don't plan on doing much else. All right, so like that, mix it all up, scoop it. You can tell the amount of paint that I have just by how many times we have to mix it, right? Small pile mixes very fast. Larger pile, you got a lot more swipes and a lot more mixes and a lot more of this and a lot more of that. Okay. Let's do it with the, oh, who knows? I might just leave it with the branch. I don't even, I mean, we could add the bit of the log that's coming out or where it fell or whatever. Or we could just do it. We've got all this extra paint, right? Let's come in and just make this gross bit of sticky, little bit of bush that's coming out of the bottom, right? All along the edge, real thick, real textured, real nasty. So like scoop it up on your brush. Let it grab off in all these weird little thick places, right? This one's gonna take forever to dry, but it will be very textured down here and it'll be really cool. You'll be able to run your hands across it and feel it. Okay, now we're gonna go back to that lighter color or with our liquid white and go up here into the green and then just come in and just very lightly tap in different places and allow some of that thicker paint to just grab up on that color. There we go. Trying not to touch everywhere, right? We don't want all that dark color. We got to have, you know, some of that, the dark there. We can't cover it all in our, in our highlights. That's a hundred percent certain. Cannot do that. A little bit of liquid clear, a little bit of our, our thalo green in there, right? With a, with our low odor mineral spirits that we snuck onto the brush. And now we've got this nice depth filled thing down here and it's super thick and textured. It's crazy. But look, <laughs> look at the branches, how thick they are. You can't even see them. There we go. A couple little things living in there, growing out, hanging out. Looks really cool. Now we do need the slightest little touch of water where our branches are kind of dipping in, right? So way out there, get this soft little dip. And wherever it goes in, that's where it goes in. A little bit of swipe. And this got way too white. It didn't need to be that long. There we go. Just a little dip, right? If you didn't even use the small edge of your knife, just get a little dip of water right there. Like it's boop, just dipping in. Cool little things, right? Even back here on this guy, can we sneak a little dip? That looks like a little dip to me. Where else is he poking in there? Over here? That looks like a dip right there. Poking in. 
So again, super easy. Not a real difficult one for us today. Let's even see, can we put some of this, some of that thick kind of shadowy texture on there? We can sure try. Look at that. I'm trying to let the bottom of it just take a little bit of that kind of thicker paint, that darker color, that little bit of shadow down there. And it makes it look a little more nasty. A little more nasty. Right? If we can take it and lay, make it sticky like that, that's going to be really neat. Make it all sticky and nasty and barky. Is that a word? All right, well, let's throw the family in, guys, and then uh, we'll sign it. We'll be done. I think it's a pretty good representation of the Fallen, number one. This one's on a smaller canvas, and uh, we sort of ran out of room every so often, but I like it. It looks really neat. Looks neat. Okay, I'm going to grab our yardstick. We're going to come up into the sky, and why not? We should have made this guy giant, but it's this is really the focal point of the painting, so... Nothing too nuts. Couple little, little family birds living off out in the wild. This is really the only way we get to travel. This, these represent my wife, myself, and my daughter. And uh, it's really, some of the times, the only way we get to take a trip is go flying through one of these scenes. That is 100% true right there. So, well, I hope you guys like this one. It ended up turning out, you know, it's not as big and as grandeur as the as the first one, but I really like it. it. It turned out great. Shows a lot of depth, a lot of distance, different things in our color, all that light kind of shine back there, reflection, the chemtrail, two different kind of mountains, trees all over the place, little grassy areas, cool little things, little reflections, showed you all sorts, and then really sticky, nasty, barky tree with its couple of little dips into the water. <laughs> ended up looking really cool. So, I'm glad you guys... Uh, you know, stuck around and finished, and I can't wait to see your version. Uh, send it to facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. You can uh, watch me on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching me on YouTube, you can watch me on Facebook. If you're watching me on Facebook, you can watch me on YouTube at youtube.com slash paintwithjosh. Please share that link around to the entire world, and let's get everybody in here all painting together with us, right? Uh, you can also go to patreon.com slash paintwithjosh, instagram.com slash paintwithjoshk. Uh, we're on Twitter, I think. We're on everywhere. It's crazy. It's like blowing up. It's nuts. So, uh, again, this is my Thursday night. I'm painting a day early today for you guys because we have all these lives and all sorts of craziness going on. So, man, it's just, whoo, it's like a second job. But, okay, enough rambling on for me. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching through and sending in your photos, and I really can't wait to see them. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video or on Sunday or on Friday or Wednesday or whatever day that we put videos out or go live. We're going to catch you in the comments. So uh, until then, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Oh. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> Stupid. It turned out looking really great. So uh, you guys are obviously excited about painting it. Just start over. Way back before I even started doing videos. Uh, by the way, start like this video right down here at the bottom where it says like. Click that like button right here. I'll show you a picture of it. Right? Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Fallen tree in the water, kind of poking, poking its branches in, right? Today, almost three years later, to see how it would change. So, uh, you're obviously excited about painting this painting, that's why you clicked on the link. So, check <laughs> check the description down below. Make sure you get your canvas wet, and uh, get ready to throw some paint out. We're gonna do it just like this. <laughs>